Hello friends, welcome back to all about structural analysis and design. So on the eve of uh, new year, I wish you a happy new year and let this 2023 bring a lot of success and prosperity in your lives. So on this occasion, uh, we will start with the new method of analyzing a indeterminate structure that is a moment distribution method. So in this problem, I will show you how to analyze a continuous beam by moment distribution method. So most of the students uh, feel this uh, particular method very difficult and confusing uh, to arrive at the final moments. So as far as possible, I will try to explain in a simplest way possible to how to get the final moments with the moment distribution method. So this is the given beam. It is a three span beam. So it is having a combination of point loads and uh, the UDL. So in the first span AB, there is a point load which is not at the center, which is 60 kilo Newton. And uh, on CD, a point load which is at the center, it is 30 kilo Newton. And uh, BC is having a uniformly distributed load 20 kilo Newton per meter. And you have to remember that the I value is different for all the spans. So AB is having 1.5 I then BC is having one I and CD is having two I and these are the dimensions given. So this moment distribution method is very simple. So first step is to find out fixed end moments, which we have already seen how to calculate fixed end moments in the slope deflection method. So I will be sharing the link in the description box of a slope deflection method also. So there are uh, certain problems on beams we have solved and also uh, the step remains same fixed and moments whether it is a slope deflection method or moment distribution method so that will be the first step the second step will be to calculate the distribution factors needed for the further calculation of this moment distribution method the third step will be moment distribution table itself where we will be arriving at the final moments and the last will be to draw a bending moment diagram for the given beam so this compared to the slope deflection method is very simple and uh, the procedure is not very lengthy compared to slope deflection method and uh, slope deflection method there were various uh, formulas you have to remember here there is no uh, formula as such uh, and you have to do with the tabular format so let's start with this particular problem so first step is to find out the fixed end moments so we will write here fixed end moments Okay, so AB span is having a point load which is not at the center and that formula will be, so we are designating the uh, fixed end moment as MFAB. Okay, when we are going from A to B and it is A anti-clockwise. So the formula will be minus WAB square by L square. Next, once you finish this AB, then again fixed end moment for BA. So that formula is that will be clockwise and the formula will be w a square b by l square so these are the fixed end moments formula for the point load which is not acting at the center so now you have to substitute here so w is nothing but the 60 kilo newton so minus 60 a is nothing but this 4 meters b is 2 meters 2 square divided by 6 square so total span is 6 meters so here in this case it will become 60 into now a is 4 so 4 square into 2 divided by 6 square so this will come out to be minus 26.67 kilo newton meter and this comes out to be 53.33 kilo newton meter so the fixed end moments a b and b a are not same because point load is not acting at the center so next is mfbc mfbc for this udl and for udl fixed end formula uh, fixed end moment formula is minus wl square by 12 so here the w is 20 length is 3 square divided by 12 so this comes out to be minus 15 kilonewton meter similarly MFCB. So this formula is uh, clockwise. So WL square by 12. So that will be 15 kilonewton meter. W is same 20, L is same 3. So therefore, positive 15 kilonewton meter is the fixed end moment for CB. 
next is the fixed end moment for cd cd this side is anti clockwise so mf cd is anti clockwise so minus and here you have to remember that fix uh, this point load is acting at the center here in this case it was not at the center so therefore the formula was changing for ab and ba so here it is acting at the center for the formula will be same for mfcd and mfdc only the sign will change as per the clockwise and anti clockwise direction of fixed end moment so mfcd is anti clockwise so minus wl by 8 so here w is 30 length is 4 plus 4 8 meters divided by 8 so minus 30 kilo newton meter so similarly mf dc dc it will be clockwise so wl by 8 positive so positive 30 kilo newton meter so this will be the first step in the moment distribution table to find out fixed end moments which remains same as slope deflection method where there also the first step was to calculate fixed end moments now the next step the step number two in the moment distribution uh, method is to find out the distribution factors and this is going to be calculated in a tabular format so this is the standard tabular format which is uh, used to calculate distribution factor df so it is designated as df so now what we have to remember is here in this case in our problem so both the ends a and d are fixed okay so there is no need to find out distribution factors for a and d so the only uh, the hinges or the roller support in this particular beam is at the b and at the point c so the joints will be the considering for finding out the distribution factors are b and c so here that's why i have written the joints b and c and the members so how many members are there from b joint two members b a and b c so that's why i have written the members b a and b c for the joints b and the next one from this c joint there are again two members c b and c d so therefore in the joint c uh, there are two members c b and c d so if you remember our uh, slope deflection method if you have seen the videos so we have seen the equilibrium conditions where mba plus mbc is equals to zero we have to do because the if this joint has to be stable then the uh, addition of the moments mba and mbc should be zero so it means the moments at b and c should be zero whereas the moments at a and d will not be zero there will be some moments so that's why we are not taking into consideration while calculating the distribution factors at the joints a and d so therefore the only two joints will come into picture that is b and c to calculate the distribution factors so therefore if this concept is clear then the uh, calculation of distribution factors becomes very simple so again we will see in the next particular videos where both the ends are not fixed also all the four will be uh, rollers or hinges and one side may be fixed and another side may be hinges so that time the again the procedure uh, a little bit changes so that also we will see in the subsequent videos so in this case a and d is fixed so moments will be there so that's why we are not considering to calculate distribution factors therefore b and c are roller joints and the moment should be zero at b and c so that's why we are going to consider the joints b and c to uh, calculate distribution factors so therefore from joint b there were two members b a and b c and from joint c there are two members c b and c d now we have to find out the stiffness k for these particular members so as the uh, for simplicity purpose i'll uh, tell you one concept that ba so ba if you consider there is a fixity here and bc if you consider here there is again continuous span so therefore the stiffness will be 4 ei by l so this you have to remember the stiffness for the ba is 4 ei by l okay so for bc also it is 4 ei by l so the simple concept is for ba there is a fixity here so therefore b uh, 4 ei by l for bc what is happening there is again a continuous span cd so therefore 4 ei by l 
so for cb uh, again it will be 4 ei by l because there is again one more span therefore the stiffness remains 4 ei by l and cd if you want to find out the stiffness the d end is fixed so therefore again the stiffness will be 4 ei by l in short all the four members are having 4 ei by l stiffness so now you have to be careful because i was changing for ba the i is 1.5 bc i is 1 and for cd it is 2 so carefully you have to substitute here so i'll show you so the substitution for e i value is 1.5 l for ba is 6 meters so this will be 1 ei so similarly for bc 4 e it was 1 i for bc the length was 3 meters so it will become 1.33 ei so for cb also 4 ei by l so l was 3 sorry so 1.33 ei and for cd the i value was 2 so 4 e 2 i divided by the length was 8 meters so it will become 1 ei so like this way you have to find out the stiffness k now here you have to find out the summation k summation k is nothing but you have to add 1i plus 1.33 ei so it will become 2.33 ei so similarly here also it will become 2.33 ei and the distribution factor how to find is k by sigma k so i will write here the formula distribution factors is equals to k by sigma k so now k value is 1 so sigma k is 2.33 so it will result to 0 0.429 so similarly 1.33 divided by 2.33 it is 0 0.571 so this will again become 0 0.571 and this will be 0 0.429 so this is how you have to calculate distribution factors and one more thing you have to remember once you add ba and bc distribution factors the summation should be 1 or the addition should be 1 so here you can see 0 0.571 plus 0 0.429 for that particular joint c the distribution factors addition is 1 and this you have to remember it should not be less than 1 or it should not be greater than 1 exactly 1 it should be there or 0 0.999 also is okay so in this case it is 1 so this will be your second step so now comes the important part the third step that is moment distribution table so like this way you have to prepare a table which is known as moment distribution table where first row will be a joints so joints how many total joints it was having so if you see here in this bin there are total four joints a b c and d so i have written here a b c and d so now next row will be the distribution factors so i'll write here d f and we have uh, just now we have calculated our distribution factors for b a it is 0 0.429 so this is b a so 0 0.429 so like this way you have to write next is b c so b c was 0 0.571 next is c b c b was again 0 0.571 and c d was 0. 429 so this is your second row which consists of distribution factors so next we'll be writing fixed end moments next will be fixed end moments which we have calculated in the first step so that is mf ab was minus 26.67 this is ab so mf ba was 53.67 next mf bc was minus 15 mf cb was plus 15 mf cd was minus 30 mf dc was plus 30 so this will be your third row which is fixed end moments now the next row will be a balancing one so balancing okay so balancing in the sense we are not going to disturb anything about a and d so our aim is to get the 
moments 0 at B and C because it was ruler support as it is the fixed end A and D there will be some moment so the balancing will happen at the joints B and C so balancing in the sense we have to summit the uh, fixed end moments at B and C so 53.33 minus 15 will result into 38.33 positive so now what you have to remember is that positive 38.33 you have to do negative and multiply by distribution factors 0.429 and 0.571 so minus 38.33 into 0.429 will result into minus 16.44 and minus 38.33 into 0.571 will give you minus 21.88 okay Similarly, here you have to see plus 15 minus 30 will result into minus 15. So this negative 15, you have to make it positive 15 and multiply by 0 0.571 and 0 0.429 to get the respective, uh, respective balancing values. So 15 minus 30 is minus 15, make it positive. So 15 into 0 0.571 will give you 8.565. And positive 15 into 0 0.429 will give you 6.435. So this is very important step of balancing where you have to take the negative value as positive value and multiply by distribution factors. Most of the students will go wrong here to balance the B and C joint. Once again, I'll repeat once you submit the joint, then whatever it is the value negative or positive make it opposite so in this case here it was the positive so we have done negative and multiplied by 0 0.429 and 0 0.571 and we got respective negative values of balancing here in this case it was b it was uh, the negative value first so then we made it positive and multiplied by distribution factors and then we got the respective positive balancing values next well, the important row comes is carry over moments so we designate as COM carry over moments. So whatever the balancing moments you got, you have to do carry over. Carry over is nothing but uh, you have to give back these balancing moments to the opposite sides. So dividing by two, you have to do it. Half you have to send it to the other joints. So for example, in this particular problem, this minus 16.44 half will go to this A okay so i'll do the arrows so that you will understand more easily and this minus 21.88 will go here half and this will come here half and this will go here half so minus 16.44 divided by 2 minus 8.22 8.565 divided by 2 4.282 minus 21.88 divided by 2 minus 10.94 6.435 divided by 2 3.2175 so this is the procedure to get the carryover moments so once you get the balancing moments then you have to half it and send it to the respective opposite sides so this is the carryover moment step so next again balancing will come again balancing so here we have to balance again remember we should not do anything balancing for a and d because it is fixed and we need at the end some moments here again in the p and c case we have to do the balancing now it is straightforward no confusion because here there is no value and it is only one positive value so this 4.282 should be minus and get the uh, next set of balancing moments by multiplying with distribution factors so minus 4.282 into 0 0.429 you will get minus 1.836 minus 0 4.282 into 0 0.571 you will get minus 2.445 similarly in this case there is no value here so minus 10.94 you have to do plus 10.94 and multiply by distribution factors so 10.94 into 0 0.571 you will get 6. 2, 3 and here you will get 4.68 so this is 
the next set of balancing moments. So next again carry over moments. You have to send half here. So this will go half here. This will go half here and this will go half at this particular side. So minus 1.836 divided by 2 minus 0 0.918 6.23 divided by 2 3.115 minus 2.445 divided by 2 minus 1.22 4.68 divided by 2 2.34 so like this we carry our moments next again balancing okay so there is no value here so this positive will become negative so minus 3.115 into 0 0.429 minus 1.33 so into 0 0.4 uh, sorry 5 so 3 point, minus 3.115 into 0 0.571 minus 1.778. So here again there is no value. So minus 1.22 is positive. 1.22 into 0 0.571 you will get 0 0.696. And here you will get 0 0.523. So next again carry over moment. Half here. This side half. This side half. Again this side half. So minus 1.33 divided by 2 minus 0 0.665 so this is uh, 0 0.348 this is minus 0 0.889 and this is 0 0.2615 so next set of balancing now so there will be question uh, when to stop this problem so this problem can be stopped when you will get the uh, least uh, decimal values so still we are uh, having some decimal so still we are having some high values so we have to reduce these values so next balancing this minus 0 0.348 into 0 0.429 is minus 0 0.15 and uh, this is minus 0 0.20 so this is positive 0 0.889 into 0 0.571 it is uh, 0.5 and 0. 381. So next is again carry over moment. So half this side, this one, half, half. So minus 0 0.15, so minus 0 0.075. So the values are decreasing. So this is what we want. 0 0.25, uh, sorry, 0 0.5 divided by 2, 0 0.25. So this is minus 0 0.1 half when you do this one for minus 0 0.2 and this is half is 0 0.1905 so next will be again balancing okay so minus 0 0.25 into 0 0.429 minus 0 0.107 so minus 0 0.25 into uh, 0 0.571 is minus 0 0.142 so here plus 0 0.1 into 0 0.571 it is 0 0.057 and 0 0.042 so now again one step you have to remember is your problem should end at the balancing point always you have to remember your problem should end at the balancing point unless and until there is nothing to balance then you can stop at the carryover moment row okay so that also we will see in the subsequent problems where the problem will end at carryover moments so as far as possible your problem should end at the balancing row okay so now the values are mostly decreasing this is 0 0.05 0 0.04 which is very less so again if you want while practicing you can go for the further steps but for this particular video i will stop here at this particular point so now the last row will be of final moments so which we require to draw the bending moment diagram also okay so final moments so final moments is nothing but you have to go on adding from the fixed end moment point so these all values 1 2 3 4 5 you have to add all these values so after adding you will get minus 36.548 kilonewton meter Next, you have to add again these things from 53.33, these values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values you have to add and you will get 33.46, 467 something you will get. Then next is again you have to add from minus 15, these complete values, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these all 10 values you have to submit it and you will get minus 33.45. 
Next, you have to add all these values, submit it, and you will get the values as 17.929. Next, these values you have to submit, you will get minus 17.939. And these values you have to submit it and you will get around 36 kilonewton meter. So this is how you have to calculate the final moments. Okay. So now, once you add this one, 33.467 minus 33.405, you will get almost zero. 17.929 minus 17.939 is almost zero and the fixed end is having some moments that is minus 36.54 end and here at this particular end d you will get 36 so our aim was to get the moments zero at point b and c and we have achieved it once if you go again step further uh, the answers will refine and you will get the exactly zero values at this particular sides okay so we have stopped i have i have stopped the problem here uh, again uh, because again the problem will become lengthy so that's why i have stopped here so for practicing you can go again further two steps and get the exact zero values so now we can write down here so m a b is equals to minus 36.548 kilonewton meter okay then m b a is 33.467 kilonewton meter mbc is equals to minus 33.45 kilonewton meter and uh, mcb value is equals to 17.929 kilonewton meter mcd is equals to minus 17.939 kilonewton meter and mdc is equals to 36 kilonewton meter okay so this is how you have to arrive the final moments and now these moments you will take and you will draw the bending moment diagram so first what you have to do is already i have drawn the bending moment diagram with respect to the loading condition this was point load not at the center and the formula for uh, that is w a b by l so that you will get 80 kilonewton meter and point load at the center is WL by 4, which is 60 kilonewton meter. And this UDL WL square by 8, you will get 22.5 kilonewton meter. So now M, so now M A B was 30 uh, minus 36.548. So it will overlap and you will get at the top side. So this is your point of minus 36.548. Next, MBA and MBC is 33.467. So this will be your value here. Next, MCB and MCD is 17.929, which is less than 22.5. So this will be here. And the next will be the last one, MDC is 36. So this we can draw here. Now you have to connect these points to get the final bending moment diagram okay so this is how you will get the final bending moment diagram so this will be your 36.548 this will be your 33.45 this will be your 17.929 and this will be your 36 below this line is uh, negative bending moment this is positive so this is negative this is positive this is negative so this is how you have to draw the final bending moment diagram so this was a four step problem the first step was to find out fixed end moments next step to find out distribution factors then moment distribution table to find out final moments and the last step is to find out the or to draw the bending moment diagram so four step moment distribution method we can solve and get the final moments for the indeterminate structure or indeterminate beam so if you like the video and understood fully please like it share it and don't forget to subscribe all about structural analysis and design and also press the bell icon for getting the latest notifications uh, in the field of civil and structural engineering thank you friends